Hello, early learners, and welcome back to the art room. It's Nina Cesarid Wright. Well, this week we've been learning about the elements of art, and we started out with line, we moved on to shape, and then form. Yesterday we talked about color, and today is texture. 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 If you don't know what that word is, I have a great book that we'll share, and you'll think, oh, I know what texture is. Say texture, texture. Even though it has a funny spelling, that's how we say it, texture. All right, let's sing a good, a good morning or hello song to one another. Oh, it's time to say hello to all my friends. Oh, it's time to say hello to all my friends. Oh, it's time to say hello. Get ready, get set, go. Oh, it's time to say hello to all my friends. So texture. I'm going to share the book with you and we will take a look at it and then we're going to make a self-portrait or a portrait of someone using all kinds of materials and it's called a collage. When you put more than one kind of material together you could use magazine pictures or yarn or anything that you have around your place and add it together it's called a collage and we're going to be doing a collage on cardboard I have hurt my finger so cutting cardboard is a little hard and you might need a grown-up to help you cut yours and I did something funny to some corrugated cardboard that you can give it a try if you can find an, an old box and cut it apart and use it because it adds such texture all right let me put this table up on my lap so I can set the book on top of it and it makes it easier for you to see all the pages up close. This book is called Spiky Slimy Smooth. Spiky, too pointed, slimy, feeling like maybe a snail when it's wet and slick and smooth, like this table is smooth. Let's see what it tells us about texture. Touch your nose. How does it feel? The way something feels is called texture. Let's look around to see what textures we can find. And they've shown us lace that you can feel bumpity. This is fabric that's been sewn with some thick thread. This is too. You know what? Just picture what an apple feels like in your hand. Is it spiky? Is it slimy? Is it smooth? And here are some other pieces of food. And this is a brick and stone wall. Furry slippers are soft and fluffy. They tickle your toes and keep your feet warm. What else is soft and fluffy? How about layers of soft, sweet cake and frosting? They feel light and spongy when you eat them. Jam is sticky and gooey. It is easy to spread on toast, but it stays on your fingers until you lick it off. Mm, yum! You can feel things with your feet too. Have you ever felt Mud between your bare toes, it's gooey and very oozy. Old flower heads are dry and papery. If you rub them between their fingers, they sometimes crumble into little flakes. Cookies sprinkled with sugar feel dry too. The sugar makes the ridges on top stand out. You can see them as well as feel them. Cactus plants are spiky and sharp. Uh, they're not nice to touch. Pebbles and stones can be sharp and pointy too. It's much easier to walk on them in shoes than with your bare feet. Texture of things are different. Candy wrappers are smooth and shiny. They make a rustling sound when you scrunch them up. Now a watermelon has a thick, smooth skin. It protects the juicy fruit that is inside. 
Picture yourself touching these things and think about what you remember of their texture. Look at all these different squash. Some are plain and smooth, some are knobby and warty, and some are curly and lumpy. Oil is greasy and wet. It makes these tomatoes slippery and slidey. Raw eggs are wobbly and runny and slimy. They feel pretty funny. Just pick fruits and vegetables taste fresh and crisp. Apples are firm and crunchy. An apple makes a loud noise when you bite into it. Lettuce feels light and crinkly and easy to eat. Freshly fallen snow can be crisp and crunchy under your boots, but if you catch a snowflake on your tongue, you can feel how light and cold it is. Things made from metal feel hard. When we hold them, they don't bend or change shape. Tiles are also hard. They are smooth and cool to touch, but the thin gaps between the tiles feel gritty and rough. At home, we have soft, squishy textures to keep us warm. On winter days, it's nice to snuggle under woolly blankets and stitched cotton quilts. What else is nice to touch? Apricots and peaches are fuzzy and dry. If you could hold a butterfly, it might feel soft and dusty and very fluttery. And it isn't really good to touch the butterfly's wings. It takes that off of there and it's hard for them to fly. Some things are not so nice to touch. These scrubbing brushes are bristly and scratchy. Bricks and stones are hard and rough. They might scrape your knuckles and your knees if you try to climb this wall. Only a couple more pages about texture. Candies have lots of different textures. Some are stretchy and rubbery. Some are smooth and melting. Some are crackly and crunchy. Texture is all around us. Everything we touch has its own texture. Look around you. See what textures you can find. That's what I was going to tell you about the weekend. Make sure you look for textures this weekend and then you can describe them to your family about how they feel. Let's close up this book and get started on our project. Now I told you I was bringing some texture things to do my art, but we need to look at our print first. So let's look at the blue chart and the artists that you already know. We have used the picture over and over of Vincent van Gogh. He is the artist that we're studying today who made this painting of the wheat field and cypresses. Cypresses, you might remember, were in the picture of Starry Night. And here are the cypresses in this picture. And remember what we learned about Vincent van Gogh? During the time of Impressionism, people were painting, but they didn't do the kind of painting he did. He put the paint on so thick, he would sometimes put it on with a brush and sometimes with a knife. And when he would scrape it on there, you could feel it and he'd say, oh, rough texture, rough, rough. This is all rough. All the golden part is wheat. And here are the cypresses. But think about the clouds. They're fluffy and smooth, but not the painting. He built up the paint on those as well. So I brought this and thought of this one for texture because he has different textures in there. And here's our song for texture. It's very short. And it's dun, 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 dun. So it goes hard or soft, smooth or rough. When you feel a texture, it tells you what you feel. So if I said, picture an apple, and you think, oh, smooth, cool. And I say, close your eyes and think of the bottom of a basket. And you go, oh, bumpy, rough. So when you're touching things and describing textures, 
think of words that would describe it. And if you said to someone, pick up something that feels cool and shiny, and they think, oh, it's that metal bowl, yes. And I could tell you, play a game. So maybe you can play a game with your family, or maybe your teacher will play that game with you, the texture game. All right, let me set things aside and show you some of the paper I brought to make this project today of texture. Remember I told you I found a piece of cardboard and I ripped part of the paper off and it made it bumpy. Because it, inside this is corrugated paper. It has a piece of paper on the bottom, then these wavy lined paper, and then they glue another paper on top. And I thought this would make a good shirt or a jacket for my person. So I'm going to start out having my cardboard be my piece of paper I'm going to work on now. Miss Reedright, where did you put your textury paper? The one that I was rubbing. Oh, wouldn't that be sad if I misplaced it? I'll just have to start a new one. And that's okay, because then you'll just do it with me. Now look at the shoes I brought. Why did I bring shoes? I think I told you what I'd planned to do with my shoes. These are three of my shoes. And I thought, we'll start out with a thin piece of paper. And I told you if you were outside yesterday and you made some textures by rubbing your paper against the tree. So here's my um, sunflower shoe. And it has a couple of patterns. It has diamonds or rhombus. And it also has some um, hexagons. So I'm going to use some green. And I'm putting my paper on the bottom of the shoe and it's all peeled off, no paper is on there. And I rub it and it makes a texture on my paper. I use another color and I'm going to do the one down here. And I can overlap them or not because this is where I'm going to be putting the face of my person. So I'm rubbing it. Can move it a little bit and put more on there. And it has to have it peeled, because if you do it like this and color it like you're coloring something, it really doesn't work very well. I'm going to use another shoe, and I think I'll use my magenta. Okay, shoe, go on over there. I'll use this shoe, my red shoe. And I'll put that on there, and I rub it. This one has flowers. When I wear this one at the beach, my friends can always tell where I've been walking, because it has flowers and paisleys on it. I think I'll use some red on this one. Now look at this shoe. It looks very smooth. It doesn't even look like it has a pattern or a texture. But see what it does. Have to hold it straight and push down. And it has like little polka dot wiggly lines on it. I can continue to use different color because this is going to be the background for my portrait, my texture portrait. And I wanted it to have some color in the background so it would have some interest. Now how I did this, I know it, it got a bunch of color under my fingernail. I can use just the edge of my scissors to scrape it, but have a grown up do this for you boys and girls because this isn't how you really are supposed to use scissors. And we don't want to ever use the tool the wrong way, but a grown-up can help you. And since I'm a grown-up, I think it's okay. I wanted to use my pink. I'm going to do more of those flower ones next to this. And I like to put the pink next to the red because I know I made this pink by mixing red and white together. Almost finished with the background. I think I liked this pattern on this shoe. I'll do it again over here. I'm just preparing the background of my picture so that when I glue my person on here, it will have an interesting background to it that has lots of texture. So I'll put my shoes aside because I don't need them anymore. I don't think this is enough for mine. I'll put it on my piece of cardboard to get started with this. Now, what I'm going to do is start out with a skin color that's most like mine although you don't have to, but see how much it's like my color? And if I don't want to make it um, 
I can try and cut and hold my paper, I can start out by making it smaller. And how I make something smaller, I say, how big do I want the face? About this big. So I can say, bend it. And how big? And bend it. And now I can just make a square first. So I'll cut my square out. It's so much easier to start out with a smaller piece of paper. So I'll put this up here. Now look, this is ready for my face. And just like I told you before, to make a round shape, you just cut off the corners. Now if you want your face to be a big old giant round circle, you can do that, but I'm gonna make mine more of an oval. And there, I think that one looks pretty good. I'm not going to glue it down yet, but I'm gonna see, does it fit on there pretty good? Yes. And I told you I liked this cardboard for its shirt. Now it looks like I'm doing it all brown and I kind of planned that. Now in order to do this, I want to, I think I'll cut off, oh, it's again where I hurt my hand. It's hard for me to cut this, but I think I can do it if I push it against the table. There we go. Oh, boys and girls, I just sent it off the edge of the paper. Let me set this down and get it. Don't mind me, I'm just going off into the distance to get the paper that flew off my table. Sorry, boys and girls, sometimes things like that happen. But it's not a problem, because I can just pick it back up. Now, I want to make this part the shoulders. So you, we know that our shoulders are kind of rounded. So I'm not gonna round the bottom, because that's what's going to get, go against the edge of the um, background paper. But here's the shoulders. Do you see? Like this. So, let's put my head where you can see it, and my body. And I'll put the body near the bottom, but it needs something between here and here. What part of our body is that called that connects our head to our shoulders? Yep, it's the neck. Is this too big of a neck? Maybe, but I can slide it under and slide it under. Do you see how my person is coming together? Put this back over here. I can move this onto my cardboard, which will be a good base for when I glue things. I brought some extra cardboard too. Now I'm just kind of dry fitting. I think I told you about dry fitting before, how you try it before you glue it. Now in this bag, I brought some collage materials. Look what it is. It came in a package that was a present. Someone brought me a present and the bag was filled with this crinkly paper. And if you are a family that shreds your own bills and, new, and uh, mail up, you can get some um, paper and put it through your shredder and use that because it crinkles it up. I also brought some ribbon. That bag is so noisy. Hope the camera guys weren't saying, ouch, my ears. Look what I'm going to do with this paper. It's going to be my hair. I'm gonna dry fit that there. I think this person would like this shiny ribbon as their collar. So let me see how wide the neck is. This is why I didn't wanna glue it first, because I thought, oh, if I need it to measure anything. So I'll put the ribbon behind it. See how wide the neck is. And you know how I've told you, you can see next to the paper how wide to cut it. And I'll cut the other end off too. And I've got my pieces ready to go. Let's take a look and see how that looks. Oh, I could use some of this ribbon for her hair because it looks a little wild. I think I'm ready to start gluing. Boys and girls, I'm gonna turn it toward me this time just so I can start doing it. And I told you the other day, paper and glue sticks work great together. Cardboard really needs the liquid glue. If you have that, terrific. If you don't, it's okay too because you will just have to um, figure out a way to get it to stick. I'm gluing my neck onto the back of my head so the neck doesn't come over its chin. Oh, I'm gonna make her kind of looking sideways. Where do I put the glue stick? In the middle or first around the edge? First around the edge glue stick it all the way around and then I do like to put some in the middle. Now I'm going to measure it with the shirt on here 
so I can see how far down to make the neck. Right about there. And then I rub-a-dub-dub -dub it all around the edges. I'm going to put the glue on the back of this cardboard. And I had my glue upside down, making all the glue come down to the end so I didn't have to squeeze it and make it get started again, because it does like to get stuck. Oh, man, these are hard. I sometimes put my glue in a little dish so I don't have to squeeze it so hard with my poor injured finger. And it's a finger that one day, and the, the door to my office, when you go down the stairs to open the door, someone was coming out as I was going in and they opened the door real fast and it jammed my hand where I was holding on the doorknob and it gave my fingers a bad pain. So now they're not working very good. So I have to use a lot of strength. All right, I think that might be enough glue to hold it on. Flip it over, put it on the bottom and hook it onto the neck. Pretty good. Here's that little piece of shiny ribbon. So I'm gonna put glue on it. Maybe I'll just use a glue stick for now, boys and girls, because that hurt me. I'll go back and glue it on better later. Put it on the neck. Now it's time to do the face. You know how to do it. Maybe I better put the hair on. Oh, if I take the lid off of this, will it be too much glue? We'll see. One time I saw a boy putting a lot of glue on there and I said to his, his teacher, ooh, I said, look how much glue he's using. He goes, well, we don't know what he needs to stick on there. So he said, just let him be. So I thought, oh, that's a nice way to do art. Let someone be. So I'm putting this hair on here with a lot of glue. I think it'll hold it. Put a lot of glue on that side. Shall I show you what it looks like so far? Look at my collage person. And look what I can touch and feel. Bumpy shirt, smooth collar, fluffy hair. Now I'm going to put the face on. So I'm going to move some of this hair out of the way because, boy, she got a little wild. Get, smoosh it on. Smoosh it down here a little bit so it won't fall off as I'm moving along. Now I have all my scrap papers, and you know about these, how I told you when you're making a face, if you need two eyes, always cut on a folded piece of paper so your eyes match. So I fold it in half, and I think that I'm going to make my eyes kind of a leaf or almond shape. There we go. Yep, looks pretty good. Two eyes, and now I'm, it doesn't go down here on the chin. I'm just getting it set up, boys and girls. Don't think I made a mistake and I'm going wild. I also brought an egg carton, and I thought, do I want to use one of these for the nose? Or would I like the eyes to stick out and have those stand up? I also brought this toilet paper tube, because that could make a good nose if I cut a little piece out of it. But I think I like the idea of the brown paper I had already done for the face. And I was going to show you how to make a nose that stands up. So if I do a little triangle-ish shape, and I hold it up and I say, was that too big of a nose? Yes, it is. But I can make it a little bit smaller. And then notice, I take my paper and I fold it just a skinny little L out of it. And that way, that little part, that skinny part, I put glue on it and stick it in the middle of my face. And I'm going to show you how my nose stands up then. Can you see the nose is standing up? And now it's right there. Now I can either cut and paste my eyes or I can color them. But I like the idea of them being, oh, maybe she'll have on some eyeshadow or some blue eyelashes. I'll glue that on there and make it kind of fancy that way. Cut and snip. Oh, I do like it. Fancy lady with the curly hair. Put your eyes on here. Oh, I like it. And put another one. Put another one on this other piece of blue. Boys and girls, it has been such a great week of learning about the art elements. Let's sing goodbye to one another and be sure to send me your artwork, would you? A picture of you. 
Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all my friends. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all my friends. Oh, it's time to say, say goodbye. Give a smile and wink your eye. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all my friends. Thank you for joining me. Have a great weekend. Go out and look for textures. Point out colors to your family. All right, boys and girls, nice having you here. Bye-bye.